let's talk about the nature of the film, The Impossible, of which I had no idea what I was going to see. I went to a screening and a uh, big fan of yours, as obviously you know, and are well aware of, uh, and Naomi, whatnot. And from the second it opened the in the airplane, I was just... Mm. Uh, until it basically ended. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's so moving and harrowing and uh, just says so much about humanity and the way, and just so real. I mean, I really, it, it's like that feeling of I never want to go on vacation, I never want to fly anywhere to mm -hmm. paradise because mm. there's no such thing yeah. as it. Um, where did you guys film that? We shot it in Khao Lak in Thailand, which is where where the, the the family, it's based on a true story mm -hmm. about a, a, a Spanish family who were on holiday there when the tsunami hit in um, 2004. And they were staying in the hotel called The Orchid and that's that's where we shot it. In the same hotel, in the same, I mean literally the, when the when the water came, they were we were standing in exactly the same places that they had been standing in. And um, it was very, it was very eerie that really, you know, all of the, all of the, you were constantly reminded um, what happened there because we because we were mm -hmm. we were there working with Thai crews who'd all been affected by it and uh, uh, yeah it was very it was always it was it was it was difficult in that respect to keep because it was so you almost wanted to kind of escape from it mm -hmm. um, but for three or four months we we couldn't really because we were recreating it and we all we all felt a great responsibility to do that properly and with respect to the people that died and to with respect to the people who lost loved ones there um, and so it was a, co a constant sort of um, concentration on mm -hmm. on getting it right and making it truthful making it real like you say mm -hmm. it is very very real you feel like it's it, it's cinematic so it's not necessarily documentary yeah. in style but you really feel like yeah. you're in it and I, I can remember that obviously that happening in the news and then finding out who you know, people that were there and, yeah. and being one or two steps removed from someone that had died in it or yeah. had survived it and uh, how just, how it affected everybody. Like mm -hmm. it was the first kind of natural disaster that was so international Yes, in a way. Uh, and I was wondering like when you're, when you're in that, like the water, the, the randomness yeah. of who survived and yeah, who yeah. didn't, it's, I think that's true. It's, it's absolutely so and something like that. Take. Is truly, it's there's no you know you'd like to think that there's something you could do or a way to be that would make you survive and uh, and and help other people survive. But the truth is, it it was so powerful and deadly, um, and there was so much devastation. The water itself was so powerful, and then there was so much um, there was so much danger in the water. Once the water mm -hmm. was on land, it picked up so much metal and. Wood and, and that, that many people were killed through injuries and mm -hmm. you know infected injuries after the fact. Um, I was just ra it's really you know very strong people died, weak people survived. Mm -hmm. It's not there was no real um, rhyme or reason to it. I think, but you're right about one of the one of the things about putting a movie camera on anything is that it is cinematic, and that was that was something that I sort of I don't know if I, it's true to say I wrestled with it, but I I was really aware of that that this. You know that this is something that happened, really happened, mm -hmm. and you know, by by making it, by putting a camera on it, it does turn it into a movie, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't mm -hmm. you don't ever want to feel that you're that you're using the tsunami for the, to make a movie, but you're making a movie of the tsunami, and there's it was a fine line, and and I'm really pleased to say, and uh, truthfully, I believe that Juan Antonio Biona, the director, did manage to do that. You know, he took. What we'd done and and the, the the shots that he did really beautifully made really beautiful um, cinematic shots, but he's kept it in the truth and he's made a film that's that's uh, an a simple account of one family's experience mm -hmm. there. And in a way, I think you get a really broad understanding of the whole event, the whole horrific well, event because of that. Because I I couldn't get my mind around it at first. Mm -hmm. You hear, you know, thousands of thousands of people have been killed, and you can't quite imagine. That you can't, you can't wrap your mind around it by by focusing on one family and what watching affects, their story. You kind of get a real strong sense of what happened there. Well, you have the children, you have the separation, you have the hospital, yeah. you have like looking for people. But the the one thing that I so appreciated in the movie was the details, mm. just the the phone. Like, oh, of course, no one wants to lend their cell phone because mm. you're going to lose 
battery and yeah. how that became the survival of, yeah. you know, and, and, and kind of like how human are you going to be? And yeah, like, there's lots of moments in the script that struck me as being, when I was reading it for the first time, just brutally honest and mm -hmm, sort of exposing mm -hmm. uh, in a way that I, there's a line that little Tom, who's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he's great. Oh, oh, he plays our, oh, he's an amazing little actor, for goodness me. But he's got a line, when I was reading the script the first time, when they, when they come out of the water, he sees for the first time this horrible wound on the back of his mother's leg. I know. And he has this line where he says, oh, mom, I can't see you like that. And it was so, I read it and I went, that's the most amazing line. It's, it, it, it's a, he's a, a, almost angry at her because he's so frightened about the state that she's worried about uh -huh. her. But he says, I can't see you like that. And he, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. And then I discovered that it's written, you know, the writer spent, Sergio spent days and days with the family. And so a lot of even the lines of dialogue are lines that they remember saying or, or remember hearing. And in a way, that's why they're so incredible because you know, you couldn't really come up with some of those lines, you know. Well, that's why I think it works and it's so affecting and it, and it stops becoming a movie about the tsunami. It becomes yeah. a movie about this family and kind of the human condition and choices that you make. Yeah. And, and we all wonder, you know, everyone, what would you do? Would Which you do? would you rather? What would you have done? And, yeah. and it really puts it at hand when you when you have to literally make decisions in the middle of the, the storm. Uh, I think I think that's the the real, you know, story here is, is that human nature mm -hmm. of that incredible inbuilt survival instinct that we have that, uh, that in the midst of such terrible horror you know people do the right thing and, and do the right thing by other people as well and help other people to survive did you meet the real family at all yeah they came out they came out to the set and um you know we we they arrived we shot the pre wave stuff in the hotel we're in the we're in the hotel that they stayed in the very oh, same hotel and um they, they we shot all the stuff before the water and then we went away to shoot some other stuff while the art department you know destroyed made mm -hmm. the hotel look like it did after the wave and um that's when they arrived and they arrived back to the lobby of that hotel as it had looked after the wave you know it was just really mind-bending. And There's the boys, the two, two of the boys um, went, wanted to be in the, f in the film. So they were, they were, they were like distressed and, and, and put with made, made a makeup and blood. And they were in the background of some of the shots. And I was looking at them going, what, what experience are they having right now? You know, what is it like for them? Yeah. I would imagine there'd have to be such post-traumatic stress for everybody involved, mm. the, the people that live there and work there. Yeah. And, and, and just going back there, I'm surprised. But I guess kids are resilient, you know, for yes. those movies. And no, they, they are really. They this, the youngest it, one was particular. You know, they. He almost he had a coping mechanism for it, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. He he. He sort of, because he was found on a tree. The 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 dad was, had the two boys, and he was washed mm -hmm. into a pillar, which broke all his ribs, and then he lost the boys, and he because he they came out of his grasp, and um, he heard them. He found one, and they were both in trees and but he heard his middle son and he managed to get him and then they took them a while to find the little boy and the little boy was next to a there was was next to a a dead man in the tree and had was covered in ants that were crawling up off branches over the sun to get into the tree but he already the next day turned it into some kind of fantasy that you know wow yeah he, 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 he the survival thing was really intense mm. Well, it's great to see you. You again. too. Have yeah. fun up here. Thank you. Yeah. All well, right. Yeah. Great to see you. Likewise. Take then. care. Yeah.